Hey, so before the podcast starts, just wanted to let you guys know that this is, you know, being released quite a bit later than I originally wanted because of all the, you know, Black Lives Matter protests that were happening. I was going to release it like right before all of that started happening, but I just didn't feel right about posting that because I wanted to give more attention to, you know, what was going on. So this is coming out a little bit late and I hope you can forgive that. And that's why I'm going to be talking about Tomorrow's World, even though it's been out for a while. So on with the show. Alright, so that was a fan cover of Muscle Museum by Ceci Marquez on vocals, Raul Martinez on bass, Diego Martinez on guitar, and Cito Paez on drums. I hope I pronounced all your names correctly, um, but thank you so much for letting me use your cover on the show. Uh, welcome to MuseCast, the podcast for musers. I'm your host, Anais Lucia, and I love featuring you know, fan covers on the show. So if you have a fan cover you would like for me to feature, please, you know, send me a DM. Uh, Links in the show notes and video description on YouTube so I can show it off because I would love to. (laughs) So today, you know, it's a pretty fitting episode. We're going to talk about Muse side projects, collaborations, basically like any songs that aren't really Muse album songs and also collaborations that I would like to see. And it's pretty fitting because we all know that Matt, of course, released another solo track, Tomorrow's World. So let's talk about it on Muse News. We request that everybody stays calm at the current moment for there is a zombie apocalypse currently happening on the West Coast. So we got some new music during quarantine. Woohoo! Thanks to Matt Bellamy, who released Tomorrow's World on May 8th amazing beautiful song i did a little reaction to it on my youtube channel on the youtube channel for the podcast and i also made like a little slow motion video for it so that's on the youtube channel yeah if you want to check it out but does he want to maybe pursue a solo career i don't know we'll see which it's kind of funny because this song came out (laughs) after i had made like my previous episode about how Muse has been able to stay together and it didn't really seem like anyone really wanted to pursue a solo career. They had all kind of done side projects, but not solo careers. And now (laughs) Tomorrow's World comes out and then MattBellamy.com, you know, that's a website now. Globalist Industries, LLP, you know, I guess he started that little company named after I assume the globalist the song so i was like huh i just made, made the episode of talking about how muse has been able to stay together and now there's mattbellamy.com so i spoke too soon i guess <laughs> but in a statement matt bellamy said this song captures my mood and feelings whilst in lockdown i have been reminded of what really matters in life and have discovered growing optimism appreciation and hope for the future so I kind of had that feeling when I was listening to the song too, and you know, don't you waste it and things like that. So and that's definitely something I've been feeling too, just, you know, what really matters in life. Definitely have gone through a lot of that too. So, and the song title comes from an old BBC TV show called Tomorrow's World, he said. Uh, it's a show that he used to watch as a kid in the 19- 1980s, and he always enjoyed the wild futuristic predictions of what life would be like now. It all seems rather lovely, comforting, and naive in retrospect, and reminds me that none of us ever really know what the future holds, so, yeah. Also, in case you didn't know, MAP also helped out the UK's National Health Service uh, by donating personal protective equipment in late March, and he also posted about his cousin, who's an ER doctor, so that was really, really sweet of him. Just makes me love Matt even more. Uh, Matt also did an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music, and where he talked more about you know 
the track and you know he said he was trying to find new ways to be occupied to stay occupied just you know like a lot of us are and he mentioned that the song now you know when he hears it, it's going to remind him of this time uh, you know in quarantine and as the other funny thing about the interview is that he mentioned about how chris you know just had a child and basically chris now has nine kids that's crazy that is <laughs> That's nuts. Um, so, so for those of you wondering if Muse is going to release some new music, Matt did mention in the interview that he would love to gather, uh, love love to get together with Dom and Chris to play together somehow with some you know, technology, and that he has written more Muse-like material and he would love to get something going with the guys. So that'd be cool if that happens. He also did mention the concert film uh, coming out this summer that they filmed at the Otur Arena about the you know simulation theory tour. He said it has elements of the live show and you know the 80s visuals, but that their manager told him to emphasize that they started <laughs> working on the film before the pandemic because there's actually something in the film about like a virus so yeah <laughs> and I actually do know one of the editors on the film and I do know because of him that they have been working on it since before the pandemic and I'm sure a lot of Muse fans already knew this but you know for those of you who didn't know I just needed to reiterate that so I'm pretty jealous of my friend who has already seen the footage. <laughs> I did go uh, see the Muse at the Muse Simulation Theory Tour, but to be able to just work with that footage, I'm kind of jealous because I used to be at work as an editor too. Matt also said that he hopes the film will come out in June or July and that it's the best film they've made. So that makes me even more excited for it because all of their concert, you know, live concerts, you know, DVDs and that they've released, I just love. I think probably the you know the Wembley one was probably my favorite it's so good but they're all amazing so uh, originally they planned for it to come out in theaters but now it seems like you know because of the pandemic they're probably gonna have to release it on iTunes all right so now let's go back in time and we're gonna go through these uh, songs and side projects and whatever in uh, chronological order so first we're gonna talk about Coldplay some of you might know that Coldplay and Muse they're you know pretty they respect each other they're you know, friendly. Uh, I don't know how close they are, but I think I've heard that they like jam have jammed out together and played together and stuff. So they must be pretty good friends. Um, and then their song "Politic," I love that song. Supposedly, it was written with help from Matt Bellamy. I haven't been able to find a definitive source for it. If somebody does have it, please put it in the comments or something, or send it to me uh, via DM. But I wasn't able to find a definitive source, but if that is true it kind of it does make sense because it, it does have kind of like a matt bellamy sound you know chris martin plays piano matt bellamy plays piano so yeah so that one's kind of like a maybe might be a muse collaboration we don't know for sure well at least i don't know for sure um but clocks this one's not really a direct co collaboration but according to a coldplay easing from 2002 chris martin said that's the newest song on the record we recorded that very very fast that was inspired by muse so even though muse didn't directly work with them on that track it was inspired and again it kind of makes sense you know i love that song too so so next is soaked sung by adam lambert from his 2006 album oh 2009 album sorry for your entertainment the song was written back in 2006 by Matt and they did record a demo for it. You can actually look it up. All these songs, I'm going to put links in the show notes and video description so you can listen to them because I cannot play them. Unfortunately, I would love to be able to play them and kind of listen to them together with you, but due to copyright, I cannot do that. And plus, you know, it's better for you to just listen to them <laughs> on your own. So yeah, Muse did record this song, but they didn't use it for an, any album back, they, back in... Uh, probably 2006 and Matt actually said to the Japanese magazine Crosby he said I wrote a song called soaked when we were making black holes and revelations it is just like Nikita by Elton John or one of those kinds of tunes from the 80s according to our publisher it's an Adam Lambert-esque song who took second place in American Idol I want to write various genres of music classical music pop music, and anything. I suppose Muse have the clear distinction that we must not go overboard, however. I sometimes cross that threshold as a songwriter. When I'm about to do so, 
It's made clear thanks to Chris and Tom. According to the Muse wiki, the song was never officially released to the public by Muse, but there was a promo CD that was issued simultaneously with the song being added to the Warner Chappelle's online catalog of songs written by Matthew Bellamy in October 2009. In a 2009 interview with MTV News, Adam Lambert said, I really related to the song because my interpretation of the lyrics is it's kind of about getting wasted and having a one night stand and that search for fulfillment of the void and how sometimes it doesn't quite happen, but your soul will be okay. It's not the first time it has happened and how it can kind of be a vicious cycle. Lambert said he could relate to the lonely experience. Personally, for me, when I was singing, I was trying to put myself in that place in a slightly darker time. I remembered how empty that can feel and I got through it okay, but it's a struggle. It sucks and you wake up the next morning thinking, uh, it's about that chase. And he also said that he couldn't believe that Muse wanted to work with him. When we found out that the Muse track had come in, I was floored, he said. I was so honored. Muse is one of my favorite bands. They're incredible. I couldn't believe that they had wanted me to record. So, Adam, good taste in bands. And you also sing with Queen, so another... <laughs> Good taste in bands. Uh, I don't know if you guys have listened to both tracks, but I have. I like both versions, actually. I mean, okay, if I have to pick one that I like the most, obviously I do like the Muse one better. But, you know, the Adam Lambert one is not that bad. It's you know definitely different. But Adam does have a really good voice. I th think he sings it very well. I still think it's beautiful. But they're both different, and I think they're both good in their own way but if i had to pick one that i like more you know i'm gonna be honest i prefer the muse version next is who knows who which is a song that muse made with the streets mike skinner i don't know if you guys have heard of the streets but they're british kind of like rap group the you know vocalist mike skinner he rap you know he's a rapper and he you know made this song with muse doing just you know, just plain instruments and then Mike Skinner did all the vocals so it's a pretty cool track I feel like they probably had a lot of fun with it because you know they got to do a little something different with you know kind of a with a rapper so I feel like that would have been probably like a fun thing for for Muse to experience and it does have like a bluesy riff in there that is you know very similar to Led Zeppelin's Heartbreaker and I definitely noticed that the first time I heard the track it was actually leaked on August 3rd, 2008, with the band saying that they were happy for it to be leaked unofficially and it wasn't intended to be a serious release. So yeah, that's kind of what I heard too, that they were just kind of messing around with Mike Skinner and they just happened to kind of create that track. And the blues riff, I believe it's also something that they had kind of played before on tour. Just, you know, how you know it's happened before with other riffs that Muse plays, they'll be playing a riff and then it eventually becomes a song. So that seems to be what happened with this track too. And it also later became a B-side to the vinyl Uprising single. So yeah, it's a pretty fun track. So listen to it if you have not yet, but you know, just be prepared. You're not gonna hear Matt singing on it, but it's still a fun track. Next is the international end titles from the 2009 film, The International. And this was written by Matt Bellamy, Tom Twiker, Tykor, I don't know if I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Johnny Klimek, and Reinhold Heil. I hope I didn't mispronounce all those names, but yeah, I love this track. It's one of my favorite tracks. It's around 9 minutes and 13 seconds, but it's beautiful. If you have not listened to this track, please do. It's an instrumental, and Matt actually talked about this a little bit in the Muse message board where he was answering questions back in April 14th, 2016. Uh, he said that the film composers sent him pad-like chords morphing across a 10 minute or so piece. And he pulled out a bit that had some structure and made it repeat, added other layers and textures, rhythm, and the string melodies. It is so beautiful. <laughs> I've been obsessed with this song for, you know, several there's been periods of time where i've been obsessed with it where i just play it over and over it's just oh, i don't know it's just love it. i love how it just kind of kind of like slowly builds and i think that's something that matt seems to do a lot in his music when especially um you know kind of starts off slow with just like maybe like one instrument or something and it's just kind of 
this crescendo and I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the song so much. So I uh, definitely recommend listening to it. <laughs> Next is Neutron Star Collision from 2010, so 10 years ago. It was written for the Twilight Saga Eclipse original motion picture soundtrack. It was first performed live on May 25th, 2010. And the last time it was performed live was September 6, 2013. And in an interview with Zane Lowe, Muse, you know, Matt said that the he was asked to you know, write a song specifically for the movie because, as some of you know, uh, Supermassive Black Hole was featured on another in another Twilight film, but you know, it wasn't written for the film. But the producers or director, or whatever, they wanted like the songs for this Eclipse film to just be written specifically for that film. So. And the author of the Twilight series, Stephanie Mayer, who's actually from the same state as I am. We're both from Arizona. <laughs> Arizonans, we love Muse. <laughs> she announced the track. She announced it on May 6, 2010. Muse is her favorite band, so I, I can bet she was pretty excited that her favorite band what, you know, wrote a song for her movie. And also, in case you didn't know, um, you know, Muse did inspire Twilight. I have not read the books. Uh, I love Muse, but... I read a little bit of the books and it's just not for me, I'll just say that. Um, I did see, what movie was it? The first one or the second one? I think I saw the first one because my cousin made me, <laughs> he likes Twilight. And then I saw, I think maybe the second one or the third one because my friend made me. Both guys. They were like embarrassed, <laughs> I think, about liking it. So they're like, I'm gonna have, I need a girl to watch it with me so I don't feel embarrassed, but I did not like the movies. Bella, I did not like Bella. I'll just say that. I don't really want to go into it, but let's just say I didn't really understand why everyone was in love with her, okay? But, you know, when I heard Stephanie Meyer, you know, loves Muse and that Muse inspired Twilight, I was like, wow, really? So I went to, you know, my school's library, you know, bookstore, and I looked in the back of the Twilight books and I saw that she thanked Muse in the back in all of them so it's like wow but it was just kind of funny i was like i love muse <laughs> but they inspired one of like not the best <laughs> films series <laughs> in my opinion um i'm sorry i know i have friends who like twilight but it's just not for me but it was just kind of funny because i love muse but they inspired something that i, I didn't think was that good but that's just my opinion okay <laughs> sorry it's just not for me but anyway Right after the song what debuted on Zane Lowe's show, uh, Matt said that the song was written, well, I don't want to bring anyone down, when I broke up with a girlfriend about eight months ago or something, and I pretty much wrote that song immediately after that. It was like that song was reflecting on that moment when you first get with someone and everything feels like it's going to go on forever. And it's a bit of like a, a bit of like a true love sentiment, I suppose. But for me, when I wrote that song, it was quite heavy because it was like a memory of what it used to be like, you know. So when I'm seeing that song, I'm kind of coming from that perspective, really. So that song was floating around since about eight months ago. And that song was what I thought would probably be on another album in the future. But it's going to be a long time until we get to do that. And then obviously these Eclipse, the Twilight people, <laughs> contacted us and were very keen to get a song for the film. And I just thought, oh, why not, you know, might as well just bug it out there and get it out there because probably the song is representing a difficult period of my life. And by the time we get to the next album, it might not be relevant anymore because my life might be changed or move on to something, moved on or something. So this song is a little bit uh, controversial, <laughs> I guess, amongst fans. You know, like some other songs, uh, Muse, it's, a lot of fans don't seem to like it. I am one of those that, okay, when I first heard it, I was, it, I will say it kind of took me a while to like warm up to it, but I do enjoy it. It's not one of my favorite Muse songs, but I still, I still like it, so I don't hate it like some, <laughs> some fans. Also, on several online polls, it... <laughs> has ranked as one of worst one of Muse's worst songs because some people say it sounds cheesy. So yeah, it's a little bit cheesy, but it kind of fits Twilight, I think. <laughs> so maybe that's why, you know, they used it for the film. The song was played nine times in 2010 before the band dropped the song. It was among the least played songs in the tour, but 
It was actually revived during 2013 on the tour along other older tracks, so... Uh, but they only played it one time in 2013. <laughs> but kind of feel bad for them because, you know, it's like you work on something so hard and then people are like, it stinks! But I like it. I like it. Especially just most anything that Muse writes with the piano, I'm gonna like it. But yeah, <laughs> there's one song that I, that's not my, it's Neutron Star Collision is definitely not my least favorite Muse song. There's, it's another one. But maybe we'll talk about that in another show. We might, I might do an episode of just like Muse's worst songs, you know. And if you have any opinions of what you think Muse's worst songs are, let me know in the comments. You know, I can make a whole episode about that and I would love to share, you know, your comments and thoughts on their worst songs. I think that would be a very interesting episode. Um, you know, because they have so many great songs, but... You know they're they're human we're human not everyone is perfect everything is you know you, you get some hits and misses so so now we're going to talk about bones a song called bones by the band moriarty from 2015. uh this song is not a you know like i said it's by a band called moriarty moriarty um they are a two-piece band from tinmouth and they were formed in 2010 and they describe themselves as the filthy dirty blues band it has Jordan West on guitar and vocals and Matthew Partridge on drums. Uh, so the single, Bones, actually has Chris on bass. So, yep. It came out on June 26, 2015. And you can also check out the music video on YouTube. And Chris is in the music video, too. So if you love Chris, who doesn't love Chris? Um, you can check out the music video. I saw it. It's it's a fun little music video. Chris is amazing. Like I love the song too. I watched the video for Chris, but after I listened to it, I'm like, oh, it's actually a real good song. So, you know, it's a really nice, pleasant surprise. Apparently, Chris and Jordan West knew each other before Moriarty was formed, uh, because apparently Chris performed with uh, the band Hey Molly in 2008 with Jordan West, and that and. Uh, and Moriarty actually supported Muse a few times between 2018, 2008, sorry, and 2009. Chris tweeted about them in 2014 as well. And Moriarty also supported Muse on their Psycho UK tour gig in Exeter. So Chris also played bass with them that night. So check out Bones. It's awesome. I love Chris's bass in it. Just great track. So Game of Thrones, 2019. Pray High Valerian, Valerian, is that, I don't know, Valerian, did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> Written by Matt Bellamy for, for the throne, for Game of Thrones. I do not watch the show. I know it's already ended, but I'm one of the few people that has never seen Game of Thrones. So it's just, I don't have time. Sorry, it's too much time. But the track is really awesome. Another kind of like ominous track that i feel kind of like it's just amazing so just listen to it you don't have to hear me talk about it just go listen to it if you have not yet and before it was actually released on for the throne they actually did play this as an interlude during the simulation theory tour and you can actually hear them playing it during the tour um, i'll post a link for that in the show notes and video description on youtube but it's pretty cool, you know, you see Dom and Chris playing these humongous drums with these mallets. But it's funny because, you know, Matt wrote the song and he sings in it. But <laughs> when they're performing it during the tour, you don't, like, Matt's not singing it. Like, Matt's not there. <laughs> so it's like they're just using his track, I guess. And then they just have Chris and Dom playing the drums. But I guess, you know, at that time during the tour, Matt's taking a little break or something. But it was just funny that... You know, it's a song that Matt wrote and he sang and he's not even there while they're performing it. But yeah, so they're playing that before it was on the Game of Thrones, before it was even announced that it was going to be on that album. And somebody in the comments on an Instagram post asked about the song and Matt replied and he said, I wrote that for something else actually, but it fits nicely into the tour set list. It will come out soon. April time, I think, connected to a well-known TV show. And then it was announced that it was going to be on the Game of Thrones album. So, 
Next is the Jaded Hearts Club Band, formerly known as the Dr. Pepper's Jaded Hearts Club Band, and it is a British American cover supergroup. I really like the name Dr. Pepper's Jaded Hearts Club Band, I think because I like Dr. Pepper. I don't drink a lot of soda, but <laughs> Dr. Pepper is one of my favorite sodas when I used to drink it, and I do like the Dr. Pepper Lip Smacker as well, so I'm kind of bummed that they didn't keep that, also because of you know, Sergeant Pepper, you know. But yeah, Jaded Hearts Club consists of Matt Bellamy on bass, it's also producer and backing vocals, Nick Sester, is that how to pronounce it? Sester from Jet on lead vocals, Jamie Davis on rhythm guitar, backing vocals, and also the founder of the band. And he also ran Blur guitarist Graham Coxon's label, Transcopic, Record, Transcopic Records, and also consists of Mike, Miles Kane from The Last Shadow Puppets on lead vocals, Sean Payne from The Zootons on drums and backing vocals, and Graham Coxon from Blur on lead guitar and backing vocals. So a lot of really talented people in this group. So apparently like the first time they played together was when Matt got his friends to play at Dom's 40th birthday party and at that time they didn't intend on playing a super group. Some of you might have seen the videos of Dom playing with them but he's not in the Jaded Hearts Club anymore which stinks. I kind of would have liked Dom to be in it too but it's okay. But yeah, so they jammed together and then they were soon invited by Stella McCartney, Paul McCartney's daughter, to play at a private fashion event called Celebration, <laughs> and Ringo Starr was there, Paul McCartney was there, and you guys probably saw those videos of Paul McCartney playing with them, which was freaking awesome. I was, that was amazing for me to see because I love the Beatles too, so I'm just like, oh my gosh, Paul McCartney, Matt Bellamy, Dom on the same stage, I'm gonna die. If only Ringo was there, that would have been amazing, like two members of two of my favorite bands together, like, oh my gosh, but... I thought their covers were amazing as well. But also, I'm um, not sure what happened first, either Dom's 40th birthday party or Jamie Davis, because Jamie said that they got together because at his party, he wanted a Beatles uh, like cover band to play. And I guess he couldn't find one he liked or something. And so he got them together to play Beatles covers. That's the story that Jamie Davis says, but I was reading that you know, they also might have gotten together at Dom's 40th birthday party, so I'm just like, I don't know which one came first. The band also played at Teenage uh, Cancer Trust in Lon London's Royal Albert Hall at South by Southwest in 2018 and at the at Madame Siam and the H Back Club. And their performance at the 100 Club in March of 2019 was released as their debut live LP in early 2020. They're also right now working on their own album of covers so i'm really excited about that one ah, because i love oldies and apparently it's gonna be a lot of motown stuff they released a single uh, nobody but me and this love stuff love starved heart of mine it's killing me and in case you haven't seen it i made my own little music video for nobody but me in like jaded hearts club style i have the leather jacket and the white shirt and everything. I wanted to feel like I was part of the band with the sunglasses. So you can check that out on the YouTube channel uh, for this podcast, Musecast Pod, Musecast Podcast YouTube channel. And also I, I did post it on the IGTV of the Instagram for this podcast. So you can definitely go check it out. And I posted it, you know, on the IGTV and I posted it on my Instagram story. And I tagged the band and they actually shared it and they liked it. They they shared it with clapping emojis, like three of them. So I was like, yay, they liked it. It was so cool. Like, I didn't think they would see it. You know, you post things, but usually you don't think the celebrities see it because they probably get, get tagged on a bunch of things all the time. So I was surprised that they saw it and then they shared it and they liked it. I was like, oh my gosh. So if anyone, you know. From the Jaded Hearts Club is listening. I would love to be in any of your future music videos. <laughs> and I definitely want to make some more music videos to their songs, but I wanted to make one for this love starved heart of mine. It's killing me. But I just couldn't really think of anything good enough. And I don't want to make a mediocre video if I don't think it's going to be that good. I, I don't want to make it and just have it be garbage. So <laughs> um, yeah, but maybe. I'll make some for their other singles. I just have a lot of fun making music videos. So yeah, that's pretty much all their collaborations, non, you know, Muse album 
songs <laughs> um, because after Jaden Hearts and you know uh, I guess yeah collaborations they've had with other groups and because after Jaden Hearts Club band we of course have Tomorrow's World but we already spoke about that during Muse News so I'm not going to reiterate everything I already said so now let's talk about bands that I would like to see Muse collaborate with I think most of these bands are actually British but <laughs> Anyway, so the first band I would like to see Muse collaborate with is Star Sailor. Both Star Sailor and Muse make really beautiful music and I feel together, like, I would probably cry. <laughs> like, if they made a song together, I would probably cry because it would be that beautiful. So, let me feel that. Let us feel that. Please collaborate. <laughs> it would be amazing. So this is another band in the same kind of category of just, like, beautiful music. Keen, okay? Keen... Is, has a lot of piano based music especially in their first album that's definitely my favorite uh, Keen album and I feel like if they created a wrote a song with Muse with that same kind of style from their first album again it would be something so beautiful I would cry and just I don't know who would sing in though I think you know both Tom Chaplin and you know Matt obviously are really talented I don't know I think it would just be amazing so and beautiful. Just, I love beautiful music that makes me cry, so I would love that. This other band is also British, <laughs> um, but unfortunately they're not together anymore, so this probably will never happen, but I just needed to bring them up because their music is also very beautiful. I'm sorry, I just use that word a lot because I I feel like that's the best word I can use. I, I can't think of a better word. They're probably, I couldn't even make up a better word, but it's not good enough of a word to describe how beautiful their music is. Hope of the States. If you listen to them, you know what I'm talking about. They use a lot of piano, a lot of strings, which I think would, you know, fits really well with, you know, a lot of stuff that Matt likes to write. So I feel like they would be a really good match. And I just think it would be a masterpiece. <laughs> like, I can't even talk just imagining what it would be like if they wrote a song with Muse. Um, and the drummers are really good too. But yeah, unfortunately that's probably not going to happen because the band is not together anymore. But that's just, you know, I'm just trying to be hopeful. But that would be a dream come true if that ever happened, which probably won't. Now we're going to go into more different style of music. Um, because yeah, I know Matt, Muse, you know, not just Matt, but Muse likes to, you know, experiment and stuff like that. So I feel like Massive Attack, if they collaborated with Massive Attack, that would be pretty cool, very interesting collaboration. We could call them, maybe if they made a mu like a super group, we could call them mu Musif Attack. I don't know. But, you know, they kind of do more like trip hoppy so stuff. And then they already, you know, collaborated with Mike Skinner, you know, with rap. A rapper I think it would just be amazing very ethereal music I don't know just you never know what would happen I feel with massive attack and muse I feel like it would be something crazy but beautiful I don't know I feel like a collaboration with this band would just be very interesting their French band air it's just so different you know air is more just like chill music just kind of if you want to just relax and ethereal I guess I just like using that word and Muse is very hard and well at least you know they're more the rock stuff you know not the piano but I feel like a collaboration with them would also be super super interesting I would definitely want to see what that would what would come out of that collaboration so next is polyphonic spree this oh my gosh a collaboration between polyphonic spree and Muse would be an opus <laughs> that's probably the best way i could describe it because if you don't know polyphonic spree has so many different members it's i've seen them live uh once did they open for rooney no i think no i think rooney actually opened for them and they performed a cover of live and let die and it was freaking amazing and i feel like I, it was so funny because i thought they would i had no idea they were going to perform that no clue and because i was listening to them during the show I told my friend, like, wouldn't it be cool if Polyphonic Spree performed a cover of Live and Let Die just because they had all these, you know, people playing instruments, like, so many members and strings and everything. And I thought, like, they would be really good, a good band to perform that cover. And then they performed it. And I was like, wait, what? Like, did they hear me? <laughs> they performed that same night that I said that they should perform Live and Let Die. So it was so weird. But it was amazing. So 
you know, since Matt likes writing a lot of orchestral stuff, I think a collaboration between them and Polyphonic Spree would be freaking mind blowing epic opus. <laughs> like, it would just be incredible. So, another one that's a little bit would be very interesting as well is Billie Eilish. <laughs> and why am I saying Billie Eilish? Because I think she's really talented. I love her voice. And I think it would just be super interesting. I'm just very curious to see what would happen. Like, what kind of what would come out of that, you know? Because I think her and her brother uh, are very talented songwriters. And I just imagine seeing, like, hearing a song with Billy and Matt's voice together. Oh, I don't know. I just want to see that so bad. So do it. Do it, Matt. Come on, let's go. And, you know, it would be kind of also cool for Muse if they collaborated with Billy. They would probably gain a lot of younger fans. And Come on, don't we want the younger fans to get to know Muse? Come on, they need better taste in music, so... And, you know, might introduce Billy to some older fans. It'd be kind of cool, and I would just really like to see that. So this next collaboration is more for just personal selfish reasons, just because I love both bands and because they're both trios, so it'd be a really interesting... Hanson, yes, I love Hanson. I've seen Hanson almost as twice, probably a little bit more. I've seen Muse nine times and I've seen Hanson ten times so yeah I love Hanson but they're both trios and come on I think that would be so cool Matt and yes Hanson is still together in case you didn't know people are always shocked that Hanson is still together making music yes and their shows are rockin just you know if you're like rock and roll Hanson is a really great uh show for that they don't just perform you um umbop and I know Hanson does like muse uh, they're, I don't know about their newer, I don't know how they feel about Muse's newer stuff, but I remember reading back when Absolution was released in, I think, 2003 here in the U.S. Um, I think Isaac Hansen said that, or one of the members said that uh, Absolution was one of their favorite albums that year. So they, they know Muse, and I'm pretty sure they would be pretty excited if, you know, Muse wanted to collaborate with them. I think that would just be really, really fun. So the last person I would like for them to collaborate with is George Bellamy, Matt's dad, who was in the tornadoes. Um, why has that not happened yet? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Muse has been together for, what, like over 20 years? Why have you not brought your dad out on stage or wrote a, written a song with him? Maybe, you know, Matt's dad is private. He doesn't want to be involved. Who knows? I w that's something I would definitely ask them if I ever got the chance to interview Muse is why have you not collaborated with your dad? Come on! Like I said, he was in The Tornadoes. Well, their best known song is called Telstar. It's amazing. I love that song. I love that song. The first time I heard it on the radio, because I, I listened to a lot of oldies stations growing up, and the first time I listened to Telstar, I was like, what is this? I love that kind of surf rock. It's just so good, so memorable. Also, I want to know why the heck Muse has not covered Telstar. Why? I don't know. Is it rights? You know, they have to get the rights. To I'm pretty sure you could get the rights pretty easily right now, especially because your dad was in there. I don't know. But you need to cover that, like, that song. It's your dad's band. Come on. Why have you not covered it? That is one of my Muse wishes, is for them to cover Telstar. If they ever cover it, I will die. And I want to be there when it happens. So if I find out that Muse covered Telstar and I wasn't there, I'll be very upset. So if they ever cover, cover it, I hope it's on a tour where they play every night so I can get a chance to see them perform it live. But I love that song. And, you know, Tornadoes have a lot of other really great songs too. So I recommend you listen to them on Spotify. But I love that song. And just hearing my favorite band play that song, I would die. And also just because it's really cute because... You know, Matt's dad was in the band. So, Matt, Muse, please <laughs> collaborate with, uh, you know, George Bellamy and cover Telstar. Please, please, please. I know, uh, you know, Knights of Sidonia definitely has kind of like a Telstar uh, sound to it at the beginning of the track. And apparently, you know, they said it was kind of like an homage to Telstar. But that's... Not I want them to cover actual Telstar, so let's go. <laughs> All right, so that was it for this episode of MuseCast. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it to the end, I hope you maybe learned some new stuff. If not, um, oh well, <laughs> I'm sorry. 
please 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 write in the comments any other bands that you would like to see muse collaborate with i think it would be just there's the possibilities are endless and i think it would be so interesting to see them you know work with other artists and i know they would create amazing stuff so let me know i want to know what you guys think follow the podcast on instagram at musecastpod and the youtube channel you can look up musecast podcast you should be able to find it and also I'll post the links for everything in the show notes and video description if you're already watching on youtube you can also follow my personal instagram at small town girl travel and all my you know sources where i got this information and the songs that i talked about will be linked again in the show notes and video descriptions once again thank you so much to ceci marquez raul martinez diego martinez and cito paez for allowing me to use their cover of muscle museum on today's episode thanks again so much for listening to the newscast podcast i'm anais lucia and i will catch you guys later